So, um, as I was stating, though, some people are just so used and free with just um, letting those things just roll off their tongue or just saying however they um, they feel, and it's no big deal. I, I don't I don't even care. I don't care who feelings it hurt. I don't care as long as I look like the good person on the outside. I don't care how I got to tell it. I'm going to tell it how I want to tell it, and it's the way that I want to tell it. Um, <laughs> Bishop walked in here to my, what you telling? <laughs> I'm telling it about Jesus. And we talking about we talking about the Word of God today. What are we talking about? We talk, we're talking about liars. Liars. I, Proverbs 19 and 9. Mm-hmm. Um, again, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will perish. So, um, I was I was saying about the liars. That we, um, people are so free to talk about being, you know, just lie and don't even care how they lie. They'll lie on Jesus. Bishops always say that. They'll lie on the Lord if they, if you let them. If, if, if it's okay by them, they will lie on him. Uh, what you always say, they'll tell it before, uh, heaven get the news. Before heaven get the news. It, it's things that people, because people are just, there's no, um, what do you call it? Um, so with a C. Where people feel like they don't have to um, feel bad about anything that they say or do. It's, there's no, um, what word I want to use when I'm talking about that? Um, conviction. No, con- that's the word I'm looking for. No conviction. They're not convicted by what they say. They just say it and it, I don't care what the punishment is. I'm going to say it. I don't care who feelings it hurt. I'm going to say it. I don't care who don't like it and who like it. As long as I'm the good person, as long as they, they believe my story, as long as I tell my story and I tell my story right, it doesn't even matter what somebody else say. Do you think you're not going to get punished for a lie? I don't care. I know we always say that they teach us when we was little. And I know folks, uh, older people have taught us um, about lying, a little white lie. It's, it's no color on a lie. A lie is a lie. There's no color. There's no big and there's no little. But people feel like, oh, I'm just going to tell this little one lie. This little, It's just a little lie. A lie is a lie. I don't care what color or what, what style you put it in or who said it or where it came from. If it's not being truthful, if it's not coming from you being telling the truth, then it's a lie. Don't put a description on it. It's just a little lie. It's still a lie. It's still considered, oh, there was the same three letters for lie. That same amount of letters, I don't want to say same three letters, but the same amount of letters. You got three letters for lie, you got three letters for sin. It's still sin. You don't get away with saying, okay, well, and I know, and I told, I said this a while back too, where people, um, they, they lie like that. You think people are not, not going to remember. You have, It's so much work in keeping in with the lie. You have to uh, uh, remember what you who you said it to and what you said, how you said it, where you were saying it at. What day you said it on, it's too much work trying to hold on to a lie. Then when somebody call you out on a lie, you're wrong for calling someone else out on a lie. That's not the way that things should be. If you just tell the truth, I know that you know to say the truth shall set you free. Some people gonna feel a ways about that, whether you tell the truth or a lie. But within you you wanna feel like if I tell this lie, will I feel convicted? Because people are not even scared to say anything or to do any wrong. I'm not gonna even talk about just the lie part. Any wrong that they do, they don't feel like they should be punished or it should be no hurt um, happening to them. The Lord shouldn't do anything for them. You're supposed to forget about that. Don't write that next to my name. So when you bring it up and you'll say on October 13, 2020 at 7.25 p.m. that you told this lie. When you when you start a lie, I told you I got these journals over here. When you told, you may need to get this and maybe I need to tell people that, that if you a liar, and people don't even really consider themselves as being one. I, you know, sometimes you just be like, oh, so you just lie like that. It's just wrong off your tongue you just so freely lie um but it's so much work and for people that got so much you want to lie you got this is something you can use and um write down the lie you told who was standing there when you said it or who you told was you was on the phone with or who you text and said that to and what exactly did you say what time did you say it on the date you said it keep your log or a book because you feeling like it's okay to tell a lie to say those things to somebody um, and not feel like there's going to be consequences behind it. Now, if you get caught in a lie, now you have to go back and go do a back trail and find out what did you say and how did you say it. God never lies. He, he has not lied to us yet. He, he, you now he's telling you to wait. Be patient. Be, wait on what, I'm, what you're asking for because the time is not now for you to get, um, for you to get 
the things that you're asking for or this blessing you want from me or the whatever you're praying for, the time is not now. You know, God do things in his own timing. It's not our time when he when he wants things to be done and when he needs things to be done. It's not in his timing. It's in um, it's not in our timing. It's in his timing. And when he does it in his timing, we feel like we ought to be what well, God lied to me. He didn't lie to you. He wanted you to wait because the time wasn't thin. You didn't need to have that situ- that, that thing then. You didn't need that new car at that time. You didn't need to move into a new house at that time. The time was not thin. Um, like I told y'all a while back, you know how you, God, you, okay, you say, I got to be at work at this time, and you leave and you're going to work, and God pause you or he stopped you from making it to that destination at the time you wanted to. You have to go back in the house because you forgot something, or you left a light on, or you forgot to do something before you left. I, I forgot to take some food out, so let me run back in the house and take something out. For dinner tonight, you you were that person that went and did that. And guess what happened? Um, God delayed you from an accident. He delayed you from somebody kicking in your door. They changed their mind because they seen you go back in the house and they went to somebody else's house or they didn't do it at all. That's the kind of God that we serve. He don't lie to us. We lie to each other. We lie to our spouses. We lie to our, our sister, our brother, our cousins, whoever. We lie to our parents. We do all of those things. We lie to everybody else. Like God is not paying attention and clocking everything that we're doing. Everything that you do that is not of his will, he's writing it down. So those that are liars, you can go ahead and write your lie down. And that way you can keep up. You shouldn't be lying anyway. I'm not encouraging lying, so please don't think take it like that. But you know, people don't feel like they are liars. People are lying so quick with it. And they feel like they, first of all, I, you know, with the word lying, we didn't, we didn't say that until I got grown. My mama was gone for a minute before I was able to, um, before I was able, actually able to say it and be like not scared that she gonna come and get me, it was some years later. Like I did not say lie for a while. I was like, Mm-mm, that ain't true. Uh uh-uh. uh. We used to say telling stories when you was growing up. Uh uh-uh, uh. They telling stories. We used to say that. You couldn't say lie. So um, it was out of respect thing. We talked about respect on yesterday, but it was out of a respect thing that you did, did not talk about. Uh uh-uh, uh. You lying or calling a adult a lie or calling somebody um, just saying the word lie was just all wrong. But now that I do, but you you know you and when you call people out on them telling a lie, they don't realize that you're supposed to real you know that you. Uh, realize that they was lying and you just like you don't have to do that if you just tell the truth from the jump guys he's straight up with us he he's straightforward with us he tell us what it is he his word in the book of, in, in this book the six, six books of the bible he tell us and he teaches us what his word is and how truthful it is and we have, we see now in this day and age how his word has come to pass how everything that he has spoken on in his word has come to pass he has not lied to us have he lied to you and if he has lied to you, let me know what he lied to you about. He may have delayed what you was praying for. He may have told you to wait for a minute. He told you it or told you right then, no, you don't deserve it or you don't need it. We feel like we deserve everything we ask for. We don't. We didn't deserve it when we was little. When our mom was telling, no, you don't need that. You don't even deserve it. You've been acting up. You've been acting wrong. We do it with the grandkids. You've been acting up. You don't deserve that. You weren't acting right. But everybody feel like they deserve something. That's mine. I, I own that. That's supposed to be for me. And that's the way we come at God. Where he's supposed to be. But he better have. He better bless me with that. He don't better do anything. He don't have to do those kind of things. God is just this great God that he don't even have to. He don't, he don't come to you for, for anything that he need done. He don't need our help. We are here to just spread the word of God out to let people know about who he is. His work is done. He does his work. His work is done. Um, But we don't have to lie to him or lie for on his, what what, what you lying for? I told you when you have to sit there and write down the name, um, uh, the person that you told it to and what the lie was and how many times you said this lie and and who, who you told it. It's too much work when you can just tell the truth. Get the truth out. Let it be whatever. They'll be like, okay, well, I told you the truth and let that be it. Instead, months later, somebody find out the real truth and you lied and you held on to that lie. You, you you held on to it until it was it was at the um, most critical time. You're just like, well, why you didn't tell me then? And I know a lot of people can't accept the truth. They don't they don't want to hear the truth. But I rather that you just go ahead and just tell me. Go ahead and give me what what it is, and let me deal with it that way. Then for you to lie, and then I find out later, and then it's just like it was a whole lie from the beginning. God don't he does not lie to us. He he Jesus promised he would take care of you. He promised he'll take care of me. And what has he been doing? He's been taking care of me. You might want it when you want it and how you want it. 
if how you feel like you should be blessed. When I pray for something, I want it now. I don't want God to wait. I don't want him to wait till next year. I don't want him to wait till next month. I want it now. I need him to do it now. And then we mad at God because he does not answer that prayer that we want at that time. I better have it by Friday at 5 o'clock by the time I get home from work. Who you talking to? You talking to the Lord about you better? Or you pointing your finger at or you working your neck or you grabbing her? What you doing? Like, how you coming at him? And you expect for him to do those things. But he's, he's sitting up there looking like, okay, you want me to give you this by Friday. But you you 47 now. And since before then, before you asked me for this, how many times have I been telling you to come and check on me? Have you forgot about me? Even when things are going good, all your bills are paid, your rent is good, your car note is fine, your kids is eating, your, everybody got clothes on their back, everybody's good. You, you forgot about me because I gave you what you needed then, but you still don't see me. I've been showing you all these signs that I'm here and you still don't see me. I've been telling you to, to tell somebody, you to be a witness to somebody about me. Your opportunity was right there, but you right, walked right past the person. You seen this person suffering, but you didn't care to help them. You wasn't there to assist them when they were suffering. Where were you? Now you need me. Now you you calling you want to put me out there as a lie that God is not real that I'm not real that I don't show who I really am that my true co- because I didn't give you these one little thing that you asked for so now I'm a lie but you lied to me how many times you kept telling your pastor I'm coming to church Sunday but you ain't showed up I keep telling my 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 family oh, I'm gonna come over there and I'm gonna help support y'all with y'all but you ain't done that yet and it has something to do with me. We gonna put an album together, but we we ain't seen you. Oh, I'm gonna come over there. I'm gonna do this. You study line and you put it out there. God started to showing, giving you chances after chances. He keep telling you, I'm, a, I'm, I'm. You keep praying about this new car. He making sure you get back and forth to work every day, but you ain't praised him yet. You you letting everything happen in the car. You doing your own little thing in the car. You 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 got everybody riding up and then you letting everybody drive it. You ain't barely putting gas in it. You ain't even washing it. You ain't you ain't cleaning it out. You ain't doing nothing. You playing whatever you want to in there. You doing your thing, but you still don't see me yet. But I'm the liar. I'm the liar. You keep you keep promising me that you're going to show up, but you only show up when your child is on program or when somebody needs your child to come and do something. That's the only time you show up. You ain't showing up just because or just because I know I got, I God got me and I know he's been taking care of me this long. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop up in church. I'm going to pop up. I'm going to go do my thing. You promised me that you was going to start back singing in the choir and you ain't showed up yet for rehearsal. You 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 keep telling me that you're going to start helping the women's ministry out, but you ain't, you ain't showed up yet. You keep telling me you're going to help with uh, cleaning the, the, the church, but you ain't showed up yet with a mop or a bucket or a broom. You ain't brought no dishwashing liquid. You ain't brought no tissue. You ain't done none of that. You don't even know what the church look like on the inside. They don't rearrange it. They don't move a picture from this side of the wall to that side of the wall. And you don't even recognize it because you ain't been there. You promised that you was going to pay your tithing. Listen, I ain't going to talk about nobody. Did You promised me you was going to pay your tithing and you have not done that yet. All these things that you've been lying to me on, I have not lied to you yet. I'm telling you, no, you cannot have that. Or no, you can't have it at this time. The time is not right. It is not the, This is not the, the, the time that you need it. Your season is not now for what you're asking me for. But you're calling me the light. So, because you haven't done what you told me you was going to do. So now I have to show you who I really am. Now I have these things I've been blessing you with and showing them to you all this time. Since I'm a liar, since you since you've been lying to me, since you haven't been showing, since you've been you you haven't been showing me what you say you was gonna be doing for me, since you haven't been doing that. Now let me start taking some things away from you. Let me show you who I really am. Let me show you what I'm about. Cause I'm I am about that life. Like I'm for real. I'm about that life. I can show you, but I can I then I can tell you. I ain't got the, I don't need you to go and read it. I don't need you to find out from nobody else, no third party, no fourth party, or nobody else. You finna know about this right now. Guess why? Guess why you about to know about this right now? Because I'm about to start taking things away from you. Now you finna be really upset with me. But I got to get your attention some type of way. I got to, I got to let you know that I'm not a liar. When I say I got you, I got you. 
When I say, when I tell you that you, you don't need, you don't need. When I tell you that these people are not being you no good and you still going around, they still doing the same thing to you and you still doing the same thing. You still say, Lord, I know I got you. I'm going to push them out. The, I'm, but you still doing the same thing. Now he's starting to mess with your car. Your car having a little problem. Now you don't got into it with people because you think it's them that makes your car because you let everybody drive. You let everybody be in. You let everybody do everything they want to in it. So now you, you mad at God. Now he ain't blessing you with a newer car because he want, you still ain't paid attention to him. Even though your car is down, you ain't got no, you know, you don't got in, got into it with some other people for the stuff that they don't did. You, you study adding on more and more, but you still ain't recognized on who I really am. You don't know what I'm about because you you trying to to make it seem like I'm not going to take care of you. You still got a roof over your head. You still got a job. Your car may be a little sick. It may have a little, you know, coughing problem or whatever. But God is still, I'm still God. I still, I still say who I said I am. I have not changed. You changed. You switched up on me. You you don't detour it in one another way. You you don't call me somebody else or you calling me not to do what I know God going to take you by the end of the year. I'm going to have this. By the end of the year, I'm going to have that. By next month, I'm going to have this. And you, because you, you, you expected for God to do those things, but you still have not recognized who he was. So how is he the liar? How does he become the bad person? How does he become the one that has not been taking care of you? How is he the one that has not woke you up every day? So that you're on your way. You ain't told him thank you yet. He's the one still got your water still running at the house. Your lights were still on when you opened up your eyes today. Your kids were still in your house. Nobody came in and, and robbed you. Nobody, No fire broke out. Nothing happened to your house or your apartment. Everything was still, still going good for you. When you went outside, now your car is cranking because I want you to see what I can do to you. Now you went outside and your car actually cranked. You ain't got to call your home, girl. Now you got a few dollars to put up in there, in your, in your tank. All these things, because I'm showing you who I really am. I want you to see what kind of person I can be. What kind of per- what what you what you've been kind of thinking out. Well, now he ain't because he ain't been getting because you now you pray to me. Lord, I just need my car to work, and I pray it don't cost that much. Now it ain't costing you nothing, even though you ain't gave me no tithing. It ain't costing you nothing. You went outside just to see if your car would crank, and it cranked, and you got some money to put some gas in it. Look at this, because this is the type of guy I am. I had to make you sit down and recognize. I had to make you push those people away that you've been hauled. You just run up and down the street where you've been doing all these things with. I had you to. I had to make sure that you recognize who they who they were, who I am, who I am, and who they who I was trying to tell you who these people are. But you keep on bringing the same thing, the same mess. I needed you to recognize me. Now your car is cranked on a Friday. Are you going to work? What you doing? You get up, you go to work, you take your kids where they need to go. On Sunday, are you coming to serve me? Are you sending in your tithing because you got paid today? Are you sending in your tithing? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Or do I need to do something else with to you on Monday? This is the kind of God that he is. You know he can have it raining at, at your house and the sun is shining so pretty across the street in front of your house. That's the kind of type of God that we serve. You'd be like, it's not raining right here. It's so dry. Because that's the type of God he is. He can make it rain. where He can do whatever he wants. He's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to whenever he get ready. He don't need our help. He don't need you to be in his way. Or trying. That's why I told you, I think last week we talked about um, God um, uh, taking care of his faith. How he take care of his people. He take care of his children. He makes sure that his children are good each and every day. Um, sorry, y'all. I was trying to see this. I hope they don't make it. They don't, they don't say go loud. I'm sorry. Um, but that's the type of God that we have. Well, God is just so this amazing God that where he does not. Uh, but that's the type of God that we serve to where he, he makes sure that his children are fine. Why we should take care of him as much as he take care of us. That's the, the kind of things that he do for us. Oh, uh, trying to turn this down. The kind of things that God does for us. We need to take those things to, to heart. And we're just like, God is just that amazing God. Again, you could have been a part. I know Miss Felicia was telling us a few weeks ago that somebody ran a light and they, they could have hit her. And God is so good to where he didn't allow that to happen. It could have been different. What if she wasn't a child of his? What if he decided, oh, no, you ain't been doing right no way. Come on. I'm sick of you anyway. Come on. I'm, I'm tired of you anyway. But God saw fit because she got a purpose here. She's here for a reason. He didn't lie to her when he said, I'll I take care of you. I'll make sure that you're good. 
I'll take care of your family. I'll make sure your children are good. I'll take care of everything. You praying to me, you giving, you, you're you not even worried about the outside or nobody around you. It's not, listen, I told y'all, when it comes with your relationship between you and God, you don't care how people feel about it. That's between you and your Jesus on how you think people, that, that's selfish. It may be, you may take it as being selfish, but this is about what, what me and him got to do. I want you to be on the same page too. Don't be so, don't be jealous of how, you know, our relationship is, but this is how much I love him because he's proven to me time and time again on how wonderful he is. And he has not lied. He has not lied. We lie. We lie to each other and lie about other things. We got to keep doing that. He, we lie, but God does not lie. He does not give us, he, he has no reason to. He's, he's proven himself how many times over and over again. And every time you lie, there's a punishment. It's a sin. So every time you lie again, you, it, it, you're going to get punished for that. You can't say, you know what, I, I did, that was a lie. Let me, don't put no color on to say that was a little lie, that was a, a black lie, that was a, a yellow lie, that was a little lie. That was, oh, that was, you told a big old lie. It ain't none of that. God does not do any of those things. When he say he's going, we hold on to his unchanging hand. When you hold on to his unchanging hand, what, he taking care of you. He making sure that you're good. He's doing those wonderful things for you over and over again. He, he's just that type of God, but we want to put him on the back burner. We want to sit him on to the side. We want to let him go. We want to pick him up when we want to pick him up. What if he pick us up when he feel like it? We just so, just so lost. We just out in the wilderness and we don't know which way to go. We in this big maze and we don't know left from right, front to the back. We don't know where to go. What if God just throw us out there in the wilderness and just leave us? We wouldn't know what to do. He's, he guides us. That would be the Bible. Uh, he only he only left us. Uh, what you say, husband, bishop? He only left us. Uh, what I say? He only left you basic instructions before leaving Earth. I remember it, bam. Before leaving before leaving Earth, he gave us those sixty six books of, of the Bible, and he there are there are so this manual that he laid out for us, this blueprint that he gave us showing us what type of God he is and how he wants things to, um, to be, how he expects for us to, to follow in his footsteps. You want us to you want the way he guides us and he lead us down the right way. When you lost, I'm talking about just being lost until you went down the wrong street and it was a dead end and some things done, you know, it just don't look right. It looks a little, look, look, a little crazy down there. God turn, he give you that sense and say, you know what? Something don't feel right. Something ain't right. And he allows us to turn back around and get it right. That's what he do when we, we made a mistake yesterday. We lied on somebody. Listen, we going back to this lie. Cause that's what we talked about. Liars. We lied on somebody. We, 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 we talk crazy to somebody. We don't cuss somebody out. We don't talk down on somebody. We don't get a whole lot of stuff. That was yesterday. We did that. When we got up today, he gave us today for everything we did wrong on yesterday. Go back and fix it. That was the most recent thing you did wrong. Go back and fix it. Go back and say, I'm sorry. It don't even matter. It, it's not even what it is. It don't, it, it, it happened. It is what it is. Let it go. Move on. It's hard. Um, and I say that because people are losing, losing their life like second by second, seem like, um, so many of the South Oak Cliff Golden Bears, we will have on another uh, sock shirt next week, uh, probably. But anyway, um, we have lost so many classmates just within our age bracket. You just like, wow, wow. Somebody, I don't, I seen them on Facebook and I was like, they look familiar. But they're so young. They're not even making it to 40. You're not even, you're so young. You're still in your 30s or your early 30s or whatever. And you're losing your life. And that's why I'm saying it. And some of this stuff is senseless. Somebody's an innocent bystander and they're getting shot down. Somebody's walking into the store and they fall into a situation and they don't come back out the store standing up. All I'm saying is this petty, any stuff, that, a lot of stuff that go on, even when folks do it on Facebook, I do not share no fight videos. I don't share all the, the cuts and the twerk. I don't share none of that. Because I, it's like it's time for this stuff to end. It's just like it's, it's, re, it's uh, repetitious. It's repetitive. We see it all the time. It always happens. And God is not playing with any of us. Our time can be at any time. Again, as I always say, you never get a chance once that person closes their eyes, take their last breath. You don't get a chance to go to them and say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for the wrong I've done or what I said to you or how I felt about you. I had the wrong impression on you. Please forgive me for saying that to you. I didn't mean to lie on you. I didn't mean to talk about you. I didn't mean any of those things because I don't want God to take me away from here. And this is the reason I did everything right. 
all this time, or I corrected things that I've done in my past. I corrected them now. And now I messed up by dealing with this situation. And now I got to go back and fix it because you can take me now. And I don't have that opportunity to get it right. And that'd be the reason why I go to hell. This one little situation. Look, that little one lie. <laughs> Going back to the little bitty white lie. That one little white lie can stop you from um, uh, making it to heaven. And that's what we don't want to do. We want to make sure that um, God is taking so he's, he's, like I said all the time, he's all, he's paying attention to us. He's looking at everything that we're doing. He, he, he's marking all of y'all know what they said about was that Santa Claus. He's checking the list. He's, he's marking it. He's checking it twice or whatever that song say when we saw when we was little, uh, he's, uh, marking it twice. You, what you think God is? What Jesus is? He, he doing the same. He looking at everything we doing and he, you know, ain't no, listen, ain't no Santa Claus, but there's a Jesus and he got, he know all of our name. Like I told y'all last week, he know every amount of hair on your head. Every strand of hair, he know how much. I don't. I'm not going to sit here and try to count it because I know I'm going to mess up. But he know every strand of hair that is on our head. We don't even know. That's how much God knows about you. So when you think you ducking and dodging and hiding and lying and cheating or whatever, he know. He see it. You can't hide from him. He can't, you, can't, you can't hide from him. You can't change your, your, your life and he don't realize you changing your life. He know everything. He know what you're going to do tomorrow and tomorrow is not even here yet. He know what you're going to do December 31st if you're going to be here between now and then. He already know that. He's not going to lie to you. He's taking care of you. He's taking care of you. He's been taking care of you all this time. But as God taking care of us, he's watching over us and keeping us and protecting us. And especially from this COVID and all this other stuff that's going on, all the things that God is doing for us right now in this time, we still don't see him. We still missing him. All these distractions that just keep waving by us, just keep passing by us. And we still don't see him. And he started saying, I'm here. I'm right here. You, I'm still, I'm still the same. I'm right here, but we don't see him. We, we got this fast. Now he don't slow us all the way down. Brought us home. You work from the house. You, you, you go through, um, uh, um, you can order food in, you can do all this other. You ain't got to leave the house. You ain't got to do all it. I, I made it to where the distractions that you were complaining about that everybody, even though there's a virus out here, but all this stuff that's going on on the outside world, I'm, I'm making it to where everybody can come on in. And we can get on the right path and y'all can see me. You can focus more on your ministry. You can focus more on you, more on your family, more on me. You've been praying, Lord, give me the opportunity so I can get to know more about you. Even when I'm not at church, even if we're not even having church, even when we um, having church one day a week or two days a week, I want to know more about you. He gave you that opportunity. What you do with that opportunity? How did you change you in this time of the pandemic? What did you do to get closer to him? Because this is another opportunity that he gave us for, because of the distractions that we've been going, we've been having. The traffic, the putting gas in the car, to going back and forth here and there, to being on the... It's just so much other things that God has been... We, we say it's, it's been and out. We've been, oh, I, girl, I got to run over here. I got to run over there. He slowed us all the way down to where the world was almost at a stopping point. Unfortunately, it was for... You know, people have lost their lives or people have gotten it and, you know, gotten well. And God bless those, those people that um, have went through that. Um, but um, he did all of that and we still didn't see him. He started saying, I was here the whole time. I've been right here the whole time. You hadn't seen me yet. I slowed you down. I stopped a lot of stuff. I closed stuff. I made it so convenient to where you don't even have to get, you ain't got to get dressed to work. Listen, you ain't got to, you ain't got to get, listen, leave your porch to get you something to eat. You ain't got to do that. They can deliver your groceries at the house. They can bring your, your food already cooked at the house. They can do all of that. But I'm the one you calling a liar because I have not given you what you wanted. Oh, I took your, your mama away. Oh, I took your sister away or your brother away or whomever, your loved one away. I'm the liar. How do I become the liar and I've been taking care of you your entire life? I never left you. I never gave up on you. I've been the same as I've been yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm not changing. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to quit you. You quit me. You didn't see me. You've been lying to me. The lying part, listen, you've been telling me, tell, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to get there. I'm, I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna do better. 
When is better? When people say that, when is better? When do you consider better? Do you wait till you get better and then you say, I'm going to do better? Or do you wait till you down and out and you say, I'm, I'm better, I'm going to do better, or whatever? How does that work? Because if you keep saying the same thing like it's a, it's a script, then it, it, it's senseless. Now, it's a, it's the, to me, I call it a lie. That's what I call it because you have not fulfilled what you said you're going to do. If you say you're going to do something, you ought to do it. If Jesus say he's coming back, believe me, he's coming back. With the signs of the times that he's showing right now, he's coming back. This world is not just going to be like, you know, and y'all see what's happening now. Again, you see what's going on on the outside or know what's going on in the world. So it's sooner than, it's, it's, re- it's sooner than later. Every day he's coming closer and closer. Are you ready? Are you still going to be the same liar? Do you need to get you a guy's day journal and write your lies down? Do you still need to get your guys' day journal and write your lies down with your date and your time and the people you told it to? What time do you, how many you need if you're that person? Most people don't realize that they're a liar. You got to think about it. Or you that person that always got to, got to tell your story first. Or you already have a, a story already lined up on what it is, on what, what has happened or what has been done. Do you already have your lie together? When you quick, when somebody asks you something, you quick on the draw. You ain't even thinking about it. That means you ain't no good liar. When you got to sit there and think about it, you ain't no good liar. And I'm not saying it like that's a good thing, but I'm just saying, I'm saying a good liar like you not quick on your feet. A, a good liar, they, they quit. They got, a, they got a response right then and there. Ain't no, ain't, it, it sounds, belie- it, they believe it. It's so truthful to them that they believe it. That's how, that's how good they are with they lie. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not encouraging a lying, but I'm just saying how people are. And they so good at it, they don't even realize it. That they are a liar. And when you call them, you're like, you know, you just lie for no reason. No, I don't. That ain't me. That means you you, you believe in yourself that you are a truthful person. Until somebody call you out on your lie, and then it's just like, no, I'm not that person. That is not me. But we, we don't ever, if you want to call each other lies or whatever, you want to continue to be that person, you shouldn't. You should want to change. You should want better for you. You should want to see uh, what kind of greater person you can be. I'm not saying you're not great. I'm not saying you're not a wonderful person, but how greater you are. Some of those old things that just don't seem like they're working anymore, you can't seem to grasp it, or you're trying to figure out why you had uh, 20 people you can call, close people you can call anytime. I'm not talking about family. I'm talking about friends that you can call, and then now you don't have one in a matter of six months. That's a problem. What have you done? I told y'all a long time ago, sometimes we got to do a self-evaluation. Evaluate yourself. See where you went wrong. See what you've done wrong to yourself. And a lot of times we can't get past that because we can't find out what's wrong. We've been lying to our own self. We've been lying to our own self. We, we sit there and lie and we make stuff out of Because we'll sit there with a man. We know he ain't no good. We know he ain't worth nothing. He ain't doing nothing for you. Nothing. For your kids, for the house, he ain't doing nothing. But we'll lie. We'll lie, and we lie to ourselves. This is a good man. This is a good man. Cause he's sleeping at night with you. That's not making him. That's not. That don't make him be no good man. That 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 means nothing. That that's that's just the body laying next to you. That's warm. That means nothing. That so you lying to yourself. Then you got to lie to your friends, your homegirls, your family about this man. You know he ain't worth nothing, but you lying to everybody else. And you lie to yourself because you feel like you have to accept that. Because he, you seem like he's the only one. When they made one, they made more than one. He ain't the one. Find you another one. They find somebody that is equally yoked with you. That wants the same things in life with you. That wants the same kind of lifestyle you want. You want your kids to be raised the same type of way. You don't want nobody that's going to be, they just here today and, and next Friday you got somebody else coming in. No, no. You want, you want somebody that's going to stay on the straight and narrow. That's going to be there for you and your family. That's long term. Don't switch up. It's too, it, it, it's switching up, listen, um, I'm not going to even talk about that, but I'm just saying don't lie to yourself to try to make yourself feel good or because you feel like because of your self-confidence has went down, has went down that you don't have to, you don't deserve better or you don't deserve um, um, something good for you. You do. We all deserve something good for us, but we got to work for that. Don't just automatically think because you're pretty that you deserve to have a good man. It don't work like that. <laughs> it does not work like that because your body is nice. Don't mean that you you deserve to have a good man. It does not work. Don't lie to yourself. 
Don't don't accept anything that's being thrown up in your face. Because somebody said you're cute or you fine or I like your hair or you, you know, this type of way or whatever. I like the way you walk. Don't mean that that's a good person for you. They don't mean that. Don't lie to yourself. Don't accept anything. Don't, 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 don't let anything come into your space or into your spirit. We allow a lot of stuff to come into our spirit that is just not right. And it's hard for us to, to fend it off, to get it off of us. Because we allowed it in and we don't absorb it so much that that's all we know. Like, that's okay. It's not okay. Don't let all that stuff that somebody keeps saying, oh, girl, he a good man. They don't hook you up, but everybody that you know done had him too. And now they, it's a good man for you. Now ain't that he don't got used up by everybody else. No, no. And I'm talking to men as well, women too. You don't want nothing that's supposed to be running it all out here just doing their own little thing and, and doing they Listen, don't lie to yourself. We all, you want better, you have to prove that you want better. God can give you what the desires of your heart. But you're going to have to reach out there and you have to grab it. You got to reach out there and you got to go do the work. You can't say I'm just saved and we're going to sit on the seat and not do nothing for him. There's work for you to do. Is it easy? No, it's not. Is the devil going? The devil still is going to attack you. He's still going to come after you, and he's going to be ready with his with his with. Listen, we're going to have all his arm on. He's going to be ready with his weapons because he feel like he feel like he can come at you any kind of way because you you just so free with it. You just so you don't you not you don't have your whole arm on. You ain't got all your your breastplate. You you ain't got all your shield. You ain't got all your stuff on. You ain't got your, your helmet. You ain't you ain't you not ready. And he know that because you haven't prepared yourself for greater. In order for you to accept somebody, um, um, a man or accept a woman, you have to be ready to absorb and get, get, get ready for that greater. You got to be ready. You got to be ready to fight and stand there. But you got to put in some work. Don't think that this is this is an easy task. I'm not gonna work for it. It's just gonna automatically come to me. It don't work like that. Folks ain't gonna just automatically bring you money. You got to get up and go to work. You got to get up and do something. What they say, oh, a man that don't work, don't eat. So if the Bible says, no, man, you don't work, you don't eat. You have to get up and you got to go do something. You got to get up there and provide. You got to get up there and, and, and handle your business like you should. Don't allow for the woman to take care of you. Don't allow for anybody to just, you don't, you don't just leave that on some, just no one somebody, no one person. Everybody have to go out here and make sure that everybody is good. And you're not good for just this week. You're good for long term, for life. This is, a, this, this is something you're trying to plan for for life. Until you leave her, we don't know when. But until you leave her, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to God. Most importantly, do not lie to God. If you say you're going to do something for him, do it. If somebody call you to sing on a program and you say, I'm coming, I'm going to do it, do it. Say what you're going to do, do it. If you're supposed, God's been showing you so many different ways that you're supposed to be doing something in, in the church, in the ministry. Again, whatever it is, do it. Don't let nothing stop you. Some people say, oh, girl, I ain't going to do that. I don't like coming in on Thursdays. I don't like when they rehearse on Thursdays. I don't like when they do this. I don't say the mornings. You know, I'll be trying to get my sleep in. What if God put you into the eternal sleep and you're supposed to be up there singing for him at rehearsal? What if he would do that to you? Hmm. Your time came at the time you were supposed to be in at rehearsal because you already made up in your mind you're not going. You lied to him. You, you, you lied to him. You didn't give him that, that right opportunity. You didn't do the right thing he asked you to do. He gave you another chance. The song that I first played when I came home. Giving God, he's giving us, a, God has given us another chance. One more chance to get it right, to get it straight. We could have been laying on the cooling board. He could have took us out of here a long time ago, but he, kept, he thought enough of us to keep us one more time, one more day. And what we do, we keep lying to him. We keep putting him on the back burner. We keep allowing other stuff come before that. Oh, I got this party. Oh, I got, I'm doing this. But we ain't, we ain't thinking about Sunday. Sunday we sleeping in. But Saturday we hanging all out to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And we ain't got time for God on Sunday because we're going to sleep all day. Then we're going to get up and we're going to go eat. And then we're going to go back home and get back in the bed. But we ain't gave God none of our time now. We back on Monday. We back on Monday. We, we back doing the same thing we was doing. When does the cycle change? I promise you, you'll feel a whole lot better knowing that God has been protecting you and, he's, and you, you see his work in you. It's not a bad thing. It's not nothing to shy away from, but folks to, to feel so ways about how you serving God and how you putting, um, putting all your all into him. 
and 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 working for him, it's nothing wrong with that. Folks gonna feel, you know, and they feelings about it because now I'm not taking as much time I was with you, but I am over here trying to get my life with God because if he take you out and I'm still here, I still got to get this thing right. Why don't we make the agreement to get this thing right? I'm gonna stop lying to God. I'm gonna stop telling him I'm coming. I'm gonna stop telling him I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna stop. Lord, I promise you, we pray. Lord, I promise you, if you get me through this, I promise you, we're gonna go. To, I'm gonna go to church on Sundays. I promise you, I'm gonna go to Bible study. I promise you, I'm gonna go to prayer service. I promise you, I'm gonna start doing that music I've been working. I promise you, I'm gonna start be, being a Sunday school teacher. I promise you, we give God all these, but we we lying the whole time. We lying to Him. He does not lie to us at all. He has not lied to us. You feel like he has because he hasn't given you the things that you want or the things you feel like he should have given you. God is an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. Don't don't take him as to him lying, um, lying on you uh, or lying to you about anything because he that's not the type of God that we serve. Um, he 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 takes care of, he takes care of us. Like he actually take care of us to where it's just like, it's, it's unreal to like, God, you took care of me when I didn't even think enough of myself to take care of myself. When I didn't even think about you when I woke up this morning, because if it hadn't been for you, these eyes I have, even though like I got the work left, they wouldn't even be open if it wasn't for you. If I hadn't taken the time out just to say thank you. Because before I turned around and put my feet on the floor to get out of the bed, you could have had something that happened to me. And I could have been dead and gone right then and there. Because I just didn't say thank you when I opened up my eyes. Before I reached over, in the midst of me reaching over to grab my phone, you could have took me out. Because I didn't even say thank you before I reached over to grab my phone. Before I turned off the alarm clock, when I opened up my eyes, Lord, I thank you because I could have slept into an eternal sleep, but you didn't allow me to. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Before you even allow me to just do anything, like Bishop I always say, you can't do nothing with God without God. You, everything we do from beginning to the end, from the time we open our eyes, we, we can't do nothing without him. He's, he's that type of God. I was thinking about that you know, when I posted that a few weeks ago. I was like, I wonder how many people actually, when their eyes open up or they realize they're woke, they say, Lord, I thank you. Because even if you realize you're woke and your eyes are not open, now, hey, Lord, did you take my sight away? Because he could do that too. You ain't got diabetes. You don't have no history of blindness in your family or anything like that. But I'm aware that I'm woke, that you don't woke me up. I'm, you know, I'm, you woke me up. Okay. So do I, even though I ain't opened up my eyes yet, Am I blind, Lord? Because you can take my sight away right then and there because it's the kind of God you are. Am I hearing? Or what is this that's going on in my ears? I, I can't hear. Because you can take my my uh, hearing away right then. Because I haven't even, once I realized I was, I didn't even say thank you. So I just decided to take your hearing away right then. Or your taste away. We know we love some good food. Listen, because I don't fix some smother pork chops over here. Okay. I'm about to eat. So, <clears throat> with that being said, he could take my taste buds away because I just thought that it was more important to turn off the alarm clock or turn off my phone or, or pick up my phone or, or whatever. And he decided to take my taste buds away. He can do that. He can make you change all of our senses. Touching? What if you reached over to touch your phone and your hands was just like a, a slinky? It was just... Because that's the type of God he is. We don't think about those small things. I love to think about the small things. How good God is and how he can change, just transform us in a matter of seconds. He don't even have to go through no whole thing. You ain't got to have no history of it. Your family ain't got to be dealing with it. You ain't got to know. He can make something happen to you that you are unaware of in a blink of an eye. And what can you do about it? Just because. And it could. I'm just saying it could be. Could be just because we didn't say thank you. Before you wake up in the when you wake up in the morning, before you reach for your phone, before you once you're aware that you're woke, however it is, you open up your eye, tell the Lord thank you before you start your day. Tell him thank you. I promise you, even before you go to bed, Lord, I thank you for getting me this far. Cause somebody is making arrangements for a family member. 
Somebody is, was it involved in a car accident while I was asleep. Somebody's house may have gotten broken into. Somebody's apartment may have caught on fire. Somebody's child may be missing. And all of mine are at home. Lord, I just want you to take care of your people. Take care of us. But I thank you. I'm not asking for nothing. I'm just grateful that you just kept me. You holding on to me. I may not have everything I want to need, but you holding on to me. You keeping me and you keeping me here for a reason. There is work for me to do. My work is not done. I got things on this earth I'm supposed to be doing. And you want me to get the word out. So you keeping me here one more time, one more day. You didn't have to do it. I'm grateful that you did. But I just want to tell you, thank you. I don't want nothing. I'm not going to even ask you for nothing, Lord, because I know I come to you with a bunch of stuff. And you just like, girl, what is this Christmas list about? No. I just want to tell you, thank you. I'm not talking about me. I'm just talking to you. I just want to tell you, thank you. Just for the little bitty things that I got food <laughs> in my refrigerator, my freezer, my deep freezer. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for just being able to, to still know what my name is. To still be aware of, of my, my birthday. To, to still be aware of whose I am. <laughs> To be aware of all of these things that you have just for little old me. To still have a voice for you. To still have the right mind to want to serve you. To want to give you all the praise. To want to make sure that somebody else is aware of who you are. And how great you are. How wonderful you are. How you've been taking care of. I just want to tell you thank you. I'm not asking you for anything. I don't, I, I'm not going to even ask you for nothing. Because you, if you never do anything else for me in, in this life, you've done enough. You've done more than enough. And I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. You're taking care of my friends. You're taking care of people that I come in contact, contact with on a daily basis. You're making sure that we, um, we, we still connected. These friendships are still wonderful. New friendships are being formed, and, and you're still a part of that. I'm grateful for that, Lord. I thank you for that. I thank you that my family is doing good. My kids are still walking around. They still the same. I thank you for that. Nobody, I take nobody to the doctor. I got to take nobody out to, to none of that. Lord, I thank you. Just the small things thanking God for. Because if it hadn't been for him, where would we be? He's an amazing God. He don't lie to us at all. He has never lied to you. He's never going to lie to you. Stop lying to him. When you're going to, you're going to do something for God, do it. Don't lie to your pastor. Because it's, it's just like you pretty much almost lying. Because God probably, you know, Bishop, he'll say, hey, God told me to, and you have to honestly like this Bible study I was trying to live it out to him, but, you know, it ended up coming back to him. So, you know, I'm being, I'm being obedient. That's a, that's a great thing to be obedient, okay? A lot of people don't want to be, now, nah, Bishop, now, nah, Pastor, I don't want to do that. But you don't know where God is taking you. You don't know where God is leading you when he's when your pastor asks you to sing a song. You don't know where that's leading you to. You when he asks you to direct the choir, you don't know why he's asking you to do that. He's setting you up for something else that he see further down the line. Cause he already don't talk to God about it. They already don't connected and on the same page with it. You not because you feel like I don't I'm not good enough or I'm not well enough. A lot of people I used to feel that way about teaching Sunday school. I taught Sunday school some years ago, and I was just like, listen. Um, I am not like, <laughs> but it turned out well. It was something that you had to step out there on faith. We talked about faith last week. Step out there on faith and allow God to lead you. If you're really doing what God has told you to do and you're leading it to the right way, he got you. He's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you fail. He's not going to let you just fall into it unless you're not letting him lead. Let him lead. You know, they, the people dancing with, you know, two step, whatever they lead. You allow the man to leave, let him leave. He got you. He's not going to let you fail. When you, he want things done, he's already talked to your pastor about it. They are already connected and say, you know what? I believe this will be a good ministry for you. Don't run from me what God is telling you to do. You don't know how that's going to bless you or how so many doors going to increase. You don't know what God is going to do. I told y'all a long time ago, I didn't know what God's day was going, how it was going to uh, go and what God had in store for it, what he was going to do to it. I didn't even know. But I, I'm making sure, like I said, I started out with whispers in the pews. But the things that, that was done within it, I let God do it. I said, let me step back. 
Let me allow some things because sometimes people um, do things because I, I see others doing it. Or oh, I want to be somebody. Or I want to act like somebody. So let me do what they're doing. So let me see if I can do outdo them. And it's not a competition. It's what God has led you to be. Everybody, and like I say a lot of time, the season that we're in, it's not everybody's season. When somebody is look like they got it going on and they got all this going on, you see it from a distance. But you don't know what they struggle with to get where they are. And it's their season now. When yours come, they're going to be happy for you, too. That's why I say be happy for somebody's blessing. Somebody get a new car, be happy for their they blessing. They get a new house, they get some new some new things happen, they get a promotion, they get an increase in payment of they, at their job or whatever. Be excited about that. You being excited for your sister or your brother, um, for somebody that is doing well with their business or whatever, be excited for that because you don't know what God has in store. I see how happy you are for your sister. I see how happy you are that your friends are doing well and they're doing good. I see you being happy for them. Here is your happiness. Now it's your time for your season. Everything you've been asking me for, I'm giving it to you. I'm laying it on your lap. I'm, I'm, laying, I'm preparing you for it. I'm giving you everything that you, the desires of your heart that you've been asking me for, telling me about. I'm laying it in your lap. Here it is. Because you've been excited for your for your friends. You've been excited for your for your family. You you always helping somebody. You always supporting somebody. You always there for somebody else. That's what you do. So that's the kind of person I that's that's why I want to bless you. It's your time. It's your time to be blessed. It's your time to get what you've been asking me for. It's your time for all of those things to happen. And uh, because of what you've been doing, because you've been serving me, because you ain't lied to me either. You've been doing what you said you're going to do. You didn't lie to me. You didn't make sure. It, check that. Ain't nothing in this pipe. It burnt out. Okay. Um, all those things that you, you've you been asking me for, and now I'm giving it to you. You don't even have to worry about it no more because I'm taking care of you. I'm making sure that you're good because you're happy for somebody else. Don't let somebody else's happiness and well-being make you discouraged or stop you from going on. Stop you from seeking God. Stop you from doing the things of his, from what you spoke. Because somebody teaching Sunday school a little bit different from you, don't make your way be wrong. You're still teaching his word. You're still putting it out there. Because your voice might not sound like sister so-and-so, sing to the best of your ability. Give it your all. Put it out there. We don't even care. We don't even care. Go ahead and, and, and put it out there. Okay, and don't even let that stop you because God, that's your best that you got. Give it your best. Somebody might sing this song a little bit different. Encourage them when they sing that song and keep going on. Don't stop. Keep going on. Encourage them, especially these young people that are trying and they're doing the right thing or they're trying to get on the straight and narrow. Support them. Encourage them to do better, to do more. And how can you help them to get on their right path and stay there? Um, you don't have to because they're young or whatever. Don't mean they don't need our guidance. Some of us older ones need guidance too. Okay, we don't know everything. We don't. We don't have all the answers. But what we can do is support, help somebody. It, as like I always say, if you don't have the resources, somebody else can have it. And all you do is just passing that love and that word around to somebody else, and let them have it too. Don't don't. Let's not be those people that don't like to share the love and don't share the wealth. Okay, so there's a lot out here for everybody to eat and to be good. But we so ooh. We're just so stingy and we feel like the Lord only supposed to bless you. It don't work like that. Now, now I really don't want to tell y'all what I'm going to talk about next week, but y'all be be prepared unless Bishop come back. So, um, we kind of praying that he is. Um, setting it up for him to, to come on back. Um, but in that event that he doesn't, I do have something that I wanted to talk about today, but I didn't get a chance to discuss it today for the simple reason. Um... God gave me this to talk about liars and probably the people that probably needed to hear it wasn't on here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, again, I'm not talking about, I said probably um, the people that, that needed to hear it or needed to know what about, um, like a lot of people don't, are not aware that they are. Um, I talked about that, that they may not know that they are a liar or whatever. But anyway, um, moving on. Um, I thank y'all for joining in on us. I know a lot of people that didn't come on. Um, it could be because Bishop is not on here. I don't know why, but it's fine. Um, I still wanted to, I did what Bishop asked me to do was to still deliver the word, um, for Bible study tonight. And I pray that you got something out of it. Um, and pass on, you can still share, <clears throat> you can still share, uh, this video. Excuse me, y'all. I'm drinking a little water.
um, to share this video or share it live with any of the other ones. Y'all know I always tell you, oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, to, and I mean, like I said, sometimes people just don't want to hear it. And they may not want to hear it coming from me. I don't know. It don't even matter. I'm doing what Bishop asked me to do is to give him, uh, is to do the Bible study for tonight. Um, and, um, do what being obedient is what I was also doing as well. But, um, but I do appreciate those that have come in and joined in and tuned in, um, uh, with me tonight. Uh, thank y'all so much for being a part of this Tuesday night Bible study tonight. Um, on this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m., we will be having our, we will continue our pastor and wife fifth appreciation service, which will be Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. Our guest will be the Ebenezer Memorial Missionary Baptist Church. That's Pastor A.D. E. Smith. They will be with us on this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. And at 3 o'clock p.m. is the conclusion of the Pastor and Wife 5th Anniversary Appreciation Hour. We will have um, the Calvary Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church Pastor J.H. Moore to be with J.H. Moore Jr. to be with us on this coming Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. So if you're not, if you're, <laughs> if you are here um, and you would like to join in with us on Sunday, we would love for you to come and be a part of that. Both services will be at the New Freeman Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. 2219 Lamont Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75216. With a great, amazing one for pastors, none other than the Bishop the White Collins. So please come on out, join in with us. We just love to have a good time. We love Jesus. We love to have a good time. So they will be at 11 o'clock and at 3 p.m. We will be um, doing Bill Facebook Live as well. So we would love for you all to um, stay um, connected with us and stay um, join in with us when we go live on Sunday. If you did, if you missed the last two Sundays, you can go back to this page, the New Freedom Shop Missionary Baptist Church page, and you can um, listen in and watch our lives from this past week. Um, also, thanks to those that joined in on um, Friday. Bishop had to preach at a funeral on Friday um, at the Golden Gate um, funeral home for a um, family. I'm going to say family. She passed away. Um, well, our niece's grandmother, let me say it like that, passed away. And um, we went to support, and Bishop had to preach. So if y'all missed that, I did a watch uh, party for that last night, uh, well, earlier today. So if you missed it, go back and watch that. I will, I don't think it's on the church page. If it's not, I will move it. I will share it on that page. But um, I pray that it was something tonight that I said that was to help somebody. Um, again, we talked about liars. I was talking, I think it was from Proverbs 19 and 9, um, was speaking on liars. Let's not lie. Let's not lie. I know it's to people, they seem like they might be easier said than done. Um, he did preach. He did preach. I was sitting up there looking like, sir, this is just a chapel. Like, you ain't got to... And they're not looking for, I don't think nobody, they looking for pastors here at the, at the funeral home. Like, he did a lot. Like, I was like, sir, that's enough. <laughs> but he did really, 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 really good. Um, he talked about trouble. Mm, he talked about trouble. So if y'all see that live, it's also on my page. And it's on the God's Day page as well. Um, but he did really, really preach. He really, really preached. He stretched out. Um, but, um, again... I appreciate y'all joining in with me tonight and being a part of this Tuesday night Bible study. Again, I pray that something that was said is to help you all um, and to help us. Like I told you, when I'm talking to you all, I'm talking to myself too um, about a lot of things, and we just not need to we not forget how good God has been to us. To where we forget about the little things that He's continued to take care of for us, um, and we overlook that. And once you break things down to how how God works and how he do his wonderful work. You just like, it's, it seems so small, but how great, how big it means. It means something really big. Um, as small as your eyes being open when you wake up. It seems so small, but it means a lot. It means a lot. Because we all want to see. I don't know. Some people maybe, you know, have it. Listen, I wear glasses, but some people that may... Um, have issues with their vision and they just have to go through so much just to see but you're still able to do it. and that's why I said even though it's a small thing it's still 
means something big. Because if you don't open up your eyes, you're just like, what am I? You don't know what to do. You don't know how to move. You don't know how to um, uh, get through anything without, without that. So um, that means a lot to be able to still smell. It means a lot. It means something small, but it means something big. A lot. It means a lot. So um, those are those are next. And I pray that I see you all back on next Tuesday night at um, 7 o'clock p.m. I don't know what bitch you want to do. If you want to come back or if you want me to do it, I'm not sure. But we'll find out then. Um, so continue to pray for each other. I think this, let me see, because I seen some comments on here a few minutes ago. I was trying to see if she said something, but I think we were going to um, Miss Tracy Foley. She wants us to pray for her, and I also Miss Cowherd, Miss um, T. Cowherd. She was um, asking for prayer for her and her daughter as well. So let's make sure that we um, pray for them um, and Miss Foley for with her um, family as well. Um, again, we don't know what others are going through. We don't know what they're dealing with, but we will um, we will be there for to pray for the the people that may be going through, and just to encourage somebody to um, to hold on. Like this is not the end because it's a bad situation. Don't mean it have to stay bad. Um, God has seen us through so many tough times, and this is one of the, the times that with this pandemic that we're dealing with. But it doesn't mean the end. You don't have to give up. This is not the end. He wants us to keep fighting, to stand strong, to hold on to his unchanging hands. He don't want us to just stop, just stop living or stop doing what well, this is over there and that is over there. No, we don't want to have to stop doing it. We want to keep on going on. We want God to keep on protecting us and keep on doing what he's been doing. His work has been, his word has been working all this time and it has never stopped. It has never stopped working. And that's the part we don't trust. We, we trust everybody else's word. But God has given us this platform. given us this word. He you know, put it in our hand. And that's what we don't trust. But we trust everybody else's word. What other people say. Our man on earth. Whatever he's saying goes. And that's what we believe. That's what we take with us. We're not trusting God's word like we should. We trust a little bit. We trust a certain amount. But we ain't trusting like we should. The way God has been for it to be designed to. For God to be handling it. The way he handled things, we ain't trusting it like that. Because we go pick it up and we still try to fix it. We still want to work it out ourselves. And uh, that's not that's not how he is. He want us to 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 trust him 24-7 with no regrets, no, no doubt. Without a doubt. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him, Mr. Summer. Without a doubt. That's the kind of that's the kind of God we serve. All right, I'm gonna go, y'all. I pray again <laughs> that it was something that was said that is to bless you and to help you. Um, and for those that listen in on God's day, I will be back on God's day tomorrow. And tomorrow, we're just gonna say tomorrow, God's going to work all this out for us. So we have to trust Him and have faith and let Him work it out. That's true. We trying to do it ourselves. We trying to do, handle things ourselves. And it's sometimes when, when God be when when He shut everything down the way that He did, Miss Felicia. <clears throat> when He shut every, everything down like He did, He was telling us then, "I got this. I need y'all to do y'all part. I need y'all to go in and fix y'all family, y'all marriage, y'all y'all kids, y'all y'all uh your baby, whatever." Your relationship. I, this is the time I'm telling you to go do that. I got all this out of here. We didn't do that. We were so upset. Why they ain't open up the malls? Why they ain't open up the nail shop? Why they ain't open up the beauty supply? Why they ain't open up the, the beauty? Everything was online. Just order it online. It's going to take a minute to get it, but just order it online. Mm -mm. I got some packages I ordered back in March. I still ain't got it. Still ain't got it. And this is what, almost November, we're in the middle of October, and I still have not got packages I ordered in March. So that's all I'm saying. He While while he was out there working, you know, with your husband, well, I, my daddy used to tell my mama that, all right, you got this in here, which is the half, but she didn't work. <clears throat> you got this, and while you working on this, I'm going out there and I'm going to get the money. I'm going to go out here and work. 
I don't need you trying to do all this. I need you to take care of the kids, take care of the house, make sure everything is good. He got a meal every time he came home. He was good. Now, that's what God was telling us. Y'all take care of this. I got this. I got this on the outside. Let me deal with the government. Let me deal with the outside work. I know what has happened. I see what my children are suffering. But it, but instead, we closed our church doors. We didn't get close as a family. We were so anxious for the shops to be open, the nail shop, the beauty shop, the bar. I, he understood, but he was taking care of us the whole time. He never stopped. You never went to bed hungry. You never went without lights. You never went without water. You still had a roof over your head the whole time. But what was the trust in God? Because we still was trying to work stuff out. They need to help and open up this. I can just cut her from home. I can just cut her from the, from here. Why? God was working it out, but we weren't letting him. We was not allowing God to work things out. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I gotta go, yeah. Bitch, I'm gonna roll the phone. So, uh, do you have anything you need to say? Okay. Um, so I'ma go. Miss Felicia, you but listen, they came back up. I was trying to go ahead and close this thing out, but they came back up. I'm just saying, we, we trust everybody else's word but God. He um, gave us this book so many years ago and we still not paying attention to that word. Listen, okay. So I'm going to go. Y'all go back if you missed the beginning of the Bible study. Please go back to the beginning and listen in. Today we talked about liars. So um, please go back and listen to the live and listen to any of the other ones, the previous ones. Share them at your free will. Listen to them. Share, share, share. Um, and like I said, for those that are on God, that listening on God's day, we'll be back on there tomorrow. Um, don't forget about the um, two services that we'll have on this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m., which will be with Evidence Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor A.D. Smith, and at 3 o'clock p.m., which will be the Calvary Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church, which is Pastor J.H. Moore Jr. So, you too, Miss Felicia. So, um, I'm going to we're gonna close out with prayer, and then I want you all to have a great rest of your night. Uh, Father God, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Thank you for everything that you have done, for watching over us, allowing us to talk about your word, to get closer to you, to learn more about you, to do the things that you're requesting for us to do and asking us for, uh, for us to do, to not continue to be liars, to be great people, to not lie to you, to, to ask you for our forgiveness for lying, for doing things wrong, or for treating you wrong, or saying things to you out of line, or saying things to you wrong. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you have done watching over us all day long, watching over us as we slumber and sleep, watching over our family, over our kids, over our house, guiding us and leading us the way we need to be led. We thank you so much for being just this great, amazing person that you are, this great, amazing, um, your work that you have put out here. Um, we are grateful for it, and we thank you for it all. You are so worthy of all the praise and all the glory, and we just thank you for it all. I also pray for Miss T. Cowherd and her family. Whatever they're going through, Lord, just touch right now. Whether it's finances, health, or whatever it is, Lord, just touch right now in your name, Jesus. Also pray for Miss Tracy Foley with her and her family. Whatever her husband is going through, whatever she's going through, Lord, her family is going through. And we know that it's going to be done. We know your will will be done. And we love you so much for everything that you are doing. That you are doing. Continue to bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray right now. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for it all. Amen. Y'all have a great night.